iron in here. If not, uh, we have a question of the next one. So if anybody wants to ask anything or address the audience, uh, be sure and find the. Jeff, I'm on the other side of the park. I'll make a sign in. Anybody wants to speak, be sure and find in. Who, uh, this is actually our first regular meeting. I'd like to welcome everybody here. I don't know if it's more year. I don't think I've ever seen the uh, uh, half in the crowd. So I'm glad to see that people are interested in county and want to get involved. And uh, before we get started, I'd like for everybody to stand. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for this county. We thank you for our country. We thank you most of all, Lord, that we can be your child. We can be a child of the King if we only ask. We thank you, Lord, that you came on this earth and you walked upon it. And then you died on the cross for our sins. You was you suffered. You were mocked. You were made fun of. You were spit on. You were put a crown of thorns on your head. And you were nailed to the cross. And what did you say? You said, Father, forgive them. For they don't know what they did. And I pray, Lord, today that we would have a forgiving heart. That we would be like you, a servant. You were a king of, you are the king of kings. But you said, I came to serve, not to be served. And I pray, Lord, that each one of us here today would search our hearts to make sure, Lord, that we are right with you. And that we would follow you. You give us directions. You give us your word. And I pray, Lord, that we would just follow your instructions and follow your example. And be a servant. And I thank you for each county official that has been elected here. I thank you for each employee. And I thank you for each person in the county. And I thank you for each pastor. And us as pastors and, and officials that have been elected, we have a duty to do, and that is to serve the people of whoever we come into contact with, of our county, of our state, of our country. So I pray, Lord, today that we would just lift your name up, that we would put you first in our lives, and that we would honor and glorify you. And we would seek your wisdom, because, Lord, you are God. And someday, you're going to come back and rule over us. And so I pray, Lord, that we would just look to you for strength and guidance. Just be with each one of us, Lord, in a very special way. And again, I thank you that we can be a child of the King. And if there's someone here today, Lord, that doesn't know you, that they might give your heart to you today. Anybody. You said anybody. You came to serve everybody. And that none should perish. That's what you wish. But, Lord, we have to choose that choice. So I pray, Lord, today. That each one of us will come to know you. Bless us now in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Brendan Miller, Breath County Attorney. John Holland, Breath County Sheriff. 
Joel Groves, Prince County Jail. I'm Chase Jr. from House School District 4. Anybody else? Urban Allen, Prince County PDA. And I'm Jeff Cole, Prince County Judge Executive. Again, I'd like to welcome everybody here. Uh, again, I appreciate people being concerned about our county. Uh, I'm going to give you a little update to start with. But what this first two weeks has been really a challenge to me. Uh, uh, a lot of things that I didn't expect to encounter and have to address uh, has actually been on the forefront. Uh, uh, one thing it has done is make me lean on Jesus more. Right. Me too. We get through this. Uh, starting off, I think the biggest problem that we've got in our county, I don't think, I know it is, we have actually got a jail that's running our county. Uh, uh, and it's not just spread the county. I think about all counties are, are uh, facing the same thing. But I'm worried about Bradley County. Uh, the other people have to worry about their county. Uh, uh, as of today, we owe $112,000 in Mayfield just for November and December. Uh, November and December. Uh, that's not been paid. That's not counting any medical bills. And I mean, we've got a stack of medical bills in our five month old uh, that has to be paid sooner or later. Uh, right now, we can't even pay our inmate bills. Last month alone in December, just the medicine for the inmates. $7,500. Uh, and that's what I've been uh, trying to work on is to try to get a hold on this thing. Uh, I'm thankful uh, for our county attorney, Brenda Miller. He is, uh, we're trying to establish a work program. It's still a work in progress. Last week, uh, instead of two inmates getting locked up, uh, we give them community service. Uh, we're going to have them out picking up trash. Uh, cleaning cemeteries off, whatever we can do. I'd rather for them to be out in, in the county, cleaning their county up, helping take care of the problem instead of being part of the problem. So that's one thing we're doing on there. Uh, another thing I'm doing, uh, uh, we're not accepting any any inmates if they're not been medically cleared, which is that complete department picks them up. Uh, if they're uh, intoxicated, whatever the problem is, Joel is, uh, and I appreciate Joel. He's been, he's been really uh, working hard to try to work on his problem. Uh, to, uh, uh, and what I mean by that, uh, instead of him taking the incarceration and take them over there and have them sit with them at the hospital or whatever their needs are until they get detoxed to go to jail, uh, we're stuck with that bill. So what this will do, the state will have to actually take them to the hospital, detox them get them medically cleared, and then he takes them, and then they're prison. So I think that'll be a major step. Uh, Joel has looked into a program that uh, we still haven't got everything together and heard back on. Uh, the maximum, and Joel, you can help me if I'm telling him wrong, uh, the maximum that we will be uh, encountered with their bill will be $1,000. Is that not right if we yeah, have that's a step in this program? Per inmate. Or in like yeah. per time too, right? Right. Yeah. So uh, that'll be a problem. Like I say, if we get somebody that has to have surgery, hit the ten thousand dollar surgery, you don't have to pay for it. So you know, uh, if we can max that line out at a thousand, that's going to be a big help. So that's another thing we're doing. Uh, I've talked to uh, Lonnie Brewer up at uh, Curry County Regional Jail. I'm looking at maybe moving the inmates. Uh, three months ago. Uh, when I was on the court, it was $21, and for years it's been $25 an inmate. Three months ago, the court actually signed a contract for $32. Uh, so I called Perry County, and he said the most that they charge in any county to bring other prisoners in there is 30 So I'm looking to see, right now at the time, he was looking to see how many inmates he may be able to take. So if we can save $2, I'm going to have Joel to go pick them up, put them in, put them in uh, a, a third, and then get them. So, anything. The big, the big thing won't kill the county. It's these little things. I mean, it's just, uh, it, it just uh, snowballed, like I say. I mean, uh, uh, I ain't got the total of what her inmates are costing us. Uh, I can tell you the two-month inmate, even just from January to uh, 
January 1st to the 6th, it's like $9,700 just for inmates. So that gives you an idea of what they're faced with. Uh, uh, and, and, and again, uh, I don't know if we just had a change of sheriff. Uh, Brendan's working on this thing to try to uh, set the work program up. As of Friday, we have 40 inmates in, in house. That's down from an average of 14. It's been averaging 54 for the last several months. So that's going to help. So, you know, I'm just I'm just doing whatever I can do, looking at anything. You all may have some options that you think I need to look at. Hey, my Lord, this is your office. You come tell me something to look at. You all may have a solution that'll work. I, I, I'm willing to try anything to move this county forward. And, and I want you all to be part of it. Another thing, your Coalfield Industrial Park. Uh, I've looked, and, and when I campaign, I campaign hard and try to bring jobs in here. Uh, in our county, and I'm still looking at whatever's available. Uh, several years ago, previous administration uh, had joined the Coalfield Industrial Park, and it's made up of five counties, which is Breathitt, Curry, Leslie, Knott, and Harlan. Uh, if a company was wanting to come in here, we'd have to make a place. Up there, they are a place. It just has to be a dream. Uh, I, I got with uh, Scott Alexander about three or four weeks ago at a crab meeting, and I told him, I said, <coughs> now that y'all got an occupational tax, I said, our employees out of our county, should we be entitled to that occupational tax? And he said the same thing I would have said, I don't think so. So I've done a little bit of digging, and I've talked to a couple of other judges in these other counties. I think we ought to be entitled to 20%. If they're collecting it, can we do that? I don't know, but I think other, I know our four counties is not involved in it. We're going to see if we can uh, unite and see if we can get our 20% of what it's generating. If we're part of it, we need our part. Uh, Jeff Allen is on the board up there. He actually even addressed it the other day, and he came back and told me that some of the some of the occupational tax money may be going, be going to some of these companies for a tax incentive for coming there, so we're checking into that. Uh, they didn't have an occupational tax when we joined it. So, you know, are we going to get anything? I don't know, but I'm going to try. If we can get 20% of everything generated up there, that's going to be uh, uh, a benefit to us, uh, a tremendous benefit. So, that's another thing I'm looking at there. Uh, don't want to just keep rambling on, but I think this is very important. Uh, another thing, when I say we're in financial trouble, we're in financial trouble, people. Uh, for example, in the finance office, to pay the finance officer. Uh, actually, this week we're negative $866.96. Uh, the employee that we got right now is actually the finance officer, 911 coordinator, and health insurance coordinator. The health insurance uh, department has got $5,500 in it. The 911 office has got a little bit more, but I mean, this is. This is money, uh, $3,023. But now you got to remember, these figures I'm giving you has got to last up to July 1st. So, I mean, uh, it's a problem. I got a phone call just last week from our auditor. Right now, as of today, we owe $147,772.90 audit bills. Uh, and, uh, I got a call from a lady, uh, Sir Beth Gregory, last week, and this is for a 2015 uh, sheriff settlement, unmined home settlement of 2015, a sheriff audit in 2015, a sheriff tax settlement in 2016, a sheriff fee audit in 2016, an incoming clerk audit in 2016, and a 2016 ongoing clerk audit. Uh, Bottom line is, she called. She said, this can't be kicked down the road. All this is going to be kicked. We owe 100. Right now, we are in delinquent of $101,215.08. We ain't got no money to pay on. Uh, and that's just the last thing. Uh, I've got to the $46,557. for the audit that just ended in June of 2017. Uh, that's not included in the delinquent because it's not delinquent. So we owe $147,772.90 in audit bills. I wouldn't expect them to, and I'm not talking about anything. I mean, that's just the bottom line. That's what we owe. Uh, she told me to get with the treasurer and try to set up some kind of 
pay program. And if we couldn't come up with a pay program that uh, uh, they could live with, whatever money comes into the county, post service money, whatever kind of money, they'll just wipe it as it comes in so they get their money. So uh, Charlie and I got with her, she called down there and talked to uh, 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 Sarah. Uh, and Charlie said, with well, $2,000 a month, be a seasonal pay. She said, well, we were thinking more like $10,000 a month. And we can't pay it. We can't even pay our jail bill. Right now, even today, we've got enough money to make payroll barely for next week. Uh, so when I say we're, we're, in, uh, we're in financial problems, we, we've got a lot to look at. Another thing, uh, waste connection. Or, uh, we got our check last week for last November. An amount of 2556 Let's see, let me read this back over. Oh, $2,556. Uh, that's what her check was. And 68 cents. We're just getting 5% of what they collect. He said, until her numbers got back up to where they, again, take this in mind. This used to average monthly around $9,000. In June, we received a check for $10,000. $309. Just this November, we received a check for $2,556. So that's how much that went down. Now we're getting 5% of what they collect. I talked to Calvin. Uh, talked to Calvin here. Uh, talked to Calvin this week. Uh, this is your last warning if you're not in your trash bill. Uh, people need to get signed up. If you're not signed up, you know who you are already. But we're going to run it in both papers, and the Breathed Advocate and the Time Voice. It's all going to be on the radio. I got with Calvin and uh, Sheriff John Holland. Next week, if you see John Holland or one of his deputies out with Calvin, you're not going to get a warning, you're going to get a kid. Uh, I think the $18.90 is going to be a whole lot cheaper on you to pay it versus coming to court, paying court calls, and then you're going to have to pay it anyway. And I know time is hard, but I mean, it's our duty to collect what we're so, supposed to be collecting, and I'm going to do my best. I promise people two things. I do the best I could and do what's right, and I'm going to do that. I hope you don't stick to come to come. And, and us as a court, when you <coughs> come together, you all have enough confidence in them, in them to elect them. We're going to work together, unite it as one, and... and Try to move this county, not try to move it, we're going to move this county forward. Because, I mean, I've got an agenda that I'm going to stick to. And, uh, you know, we, we're going to get through this thing. So, starting this week, uh, actually signed it last week, exactly the order. Uh, I've cut everybody down that's an employee to 32 hour work week. Uh, I don't want to. Everybody that works, they set their bills on what money they make. But, I mean, we got to start somewhere. The road department finances is the best thing we've got. But it's not fair to uh, include these at the courthouse and not include them. It'd be the same way if the, if the road department was broke or in the financial problem. These people, it, and it's not the road department fault, and it's not these people fault. It's a bill fault. It's a financial fault. And, and that's how I'm, that's how I'm going to address it. Uh, so, uh, and I had to figure, and I can't tell you what it is, uh, it was a hit of state of county around twenty seven hundred and some dollars per week. Uh, cutting down to eight, uh, cut, cutting down to thirty two hour work week. Uh, uh, and another thing, uh, the county and the previous administration has been providing a cell phone uh, if you're a county employee. Uh, there's about four or five people that are, that we need to provide phone phone for, and it could be the road department, nine one one. It's just a, it's just a handful. But I've cut, uh, we've got 15 employees that's uh, taking part in the cell phone uh, thing. It's not like we're paying their cell phone. They get a 20% discount <coughs> application for being, it, being the uh, employee of the county. But then we've been paying $30 per cell phone. And it may not sound like a lot, but $450 a week, um, uh, I mean a month, I mean that adds up. And again, yeah. I'm just looking at what I can cut costs on and what I can do. Uh, that's kind of all the need. So now I want to kind of tell you what, what we have got good going on. Uh, 
and, and, and this sounds bad, what I was talking about, but it's a good thing. It just needs to be addressed, and uh, I'm going to see what I can do. Uh, this past uh, week, uh, uh, starting with her elk view, uh, Jennifer McIntosh, and she's here. Uh, uh, she worked for Crad, and uh, Jennifer McIntosh, I should say her last name, but uh, she's actually got roots here in the county and been working. Uh, she was a instrumental to me when I was in here as commissioner, and uh, she's still working hard and uh, uh, trying to do what she can do to better rid the county. And I appreciate her, and I appreciate all of Crad. And, uh, uh, She's been working hand in hand with Max that worked for Paul Nesbitt and Nesbitt Engineering. Uh, they help you kind of update on uh, phase one. I know y'all probably seen it. We had groundbreaking. Uh, that's in the works. But we're already working on phase two. And phase two, what it will include is a playground for kids. It's going to have <laughs> cabins. It's going to be built up there at the LPU, around 15 to 20, somewhere in that number. There will also be 24 full camper hooked up with water, electric, and sewer. Uh, uh, then another thing it's going to have, it's going to have a sewer dump, uh, it's going to have a bathhouse, uh, it's going to have a visiting center, and the visiting center, what it includes, will be a store. Uh, it also have an office, and whoever is managing it, uh, they'll actually be the night guard there. they have a living quarter in it. Uh, and, and the bathhouse also have a laundromat in it, uh, have an expo included in it, and all this stuff will be ADA compliant. So, I mean, it'll be a, a tip top campsite. Uh, and I didn't write down here, but I think Jennifer knows that also include a fence that will have all of that campground, you know, for so living in there. Uh, so, uh, that's one of the good updates that I can uh, provide for you today. And uh, again, uh, we're working at a lot of different angles. Uh, Bridget Banks, are you here? Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna let her get up and kind of give an update on the road program. Uh, uh, I have come when I came in and when I was commissioner, you would just actually call in and give a road, and they would work on it that week. And if it didn't get done, they would pretty much just tore up, start over again. So I broke it down in districts. Uh, Bill Landon right now is uh, in the acting room for me, filling in uh, uh, for us, and uh, each district will have a have the roads that get turned in at the end of the week. They get a list of what roads they've been working on. But everything goes through Bridget. Are you in the master? Or me even. If somebody called in, uh, Bridget to get it, get it on her <coughs> I've had somebody going out in the county just kind of looking at the road, prioritizing. If they're really bad shape, we're kind of putting a red check beside them to try to get those first. Uh, uh, so, I know everybody in here probably got a road that need to be worked on. Call and get to Bridget. If, it, if you don't see anything done in a couple weeks or a week or so, or time that you think it should be addressed, call back in. And I'm going to look at that list. If we got roads that's been turned in two or three times, and they're in the priority type list, they'll be bumped up and worked on this. Uh, you know, I'm here I'm here to, to, to treat all four districts the same. Everybody in here is a taxpayer, and I want, I want to do everything I can for everyone of you. But kind of explain to them, Bridget, how, how, how you're doing it and read the different things. Uh, the Bridget County Ground Crew, they've been working very hard this month due to the inclement weather and wet road conditions. But Judge Noble, he's made some very exciting new changes to organize and to document all of our road work. You know, before we wasn't documenting complaints, I mean, I would turn them in and there were so many that we didn't keep a running track of them, so we didn't know what got done and what didn't. So now, when you call a road complaint into the office, we are running the list every week, and then our road foreman checks these complaints and prioritizes them by what needs the most. And then the road crew works daily from this list. So if your road doesn't get fixed in a couple weeks or a month, please call us back, and then we'll put it at the top of the list because that'll be your second time calling it in. But this is what they look like. And I've got it by district, district 1, 2, 3, 4, and I'll put it in the list. And then the road crew goes out by this list. So, you know, this is just something I want to try. Uh, and again, if y'all got a better idea, come to me. I'm willing to, I'm here for y'all. Uh, and, and I want to I want to make it easy as I can on the Metro Road Department. And again, I think just being accountable for everything is one way to do it. Uh, one fair note with the Road Department, uh, coming in sometime between Christmas break and New Year's break, a set of torches got stolen from the county garage. Uh, 
Uh, got with John Holland last week. He's opened up an investigation on it to see if they can turn up. When I was in here as commissioner, we actually brought a set of cameras uh, in front of the county garage. Uh, and I've got a, I've got a list. I've got a price list. I'm going to have actually cameras put up at the county garage. Whoever's coming in, going out, whatever's happening inside the building, we want to have documentation of it. Uh, Calvin did look at the old system. He's got it up and running, but like I said, there's four cameras, I think, and it's kind of inside. Uh, we need to get the landing plane, but so we, you know, we're just, we're just making, we're taking baby steps to try to, try to move forward and, uh, uh, you know, so. Uh, so that's one of the things. Uh, I don't think you all probably came here expecting, expecting that much of an update. I just want to let you know where we are and, uh, and I say if you got some, Things that you think we need to try, then let us know. Okay, next part of business. Uh, I want uh, approval of the minutes for the regular court meeting held on December 21st, 2018. The emergency meeting that was held on January 7th, 2019. The emergency meeting that was held on January the 10th. And the special court meeting that was held January the 10th. <coughs>
right on the two, but I think. Anybody second? Second. <coughs> second for Donnie Bush. District 1? Aye. Uh, <coughs> 2? 3? Aye. Uh, 4? Aye. Uh, Motion carries. Aye. Uh, 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 let's see. Financing. First thing business <coughs> consideration approval of financial statements and appropriation for revenue uh, condition report. This is this is uh, uh, how we take our money and pay our bills. Sometimes we don't have this account, so we have to transfer it out of that account, and uh, that that kind of explains it. And then uh, and then the next one on the on the on the list is consideration approval of regular claim list. And I'm going to put on there that uh, the claim list this month. Sitting down. So on the claim list this month is three hundred sixteen thousand three hundred twenty-six dollars and ninety-eight cents. Uh, what we've got on these bills to pay is a jail bill for November, and then whatever bill that we have to pay to keep the lights on, and, and it's, it's a bare minimum. But uh, you know, I just want you to know what kind of figures we're dealing with. Next thing on the list is consideration of approval of the January 19th claim list from the previous administration. Uh, just to move forward to take a vote on the regular claims list here. Okay, sorry about that. Back it up. Is there consideration of approval for the regular claim list? Right? I guess I can bring on the one claim for us, sir. Anybody want to make a motion on approval of the claim list? approval for 2019 claim list from the previous administration. Motion for the previous. Can I get your name motion? Second. Thank you for Ray Moore. Any discussion?
generation approval of the first reading of the budget amendment number seven. Second. Who made a motion? Donnie Bush made a motion. Second for Ray Moore. Any discussion? Discussion, District 1? Aye. District 2? Aye. District 3? Aye. District 4? Aye. Okay, the next one has normally been included in the claims list. This is something that I haven't got to work on. Uh, it's consideration approval for the payment of the Jackson Post Office for the postage of $45.85 for mailing back a PEB to Omaha, Nebraska. Uh, the previous administration had a credit card that they kind of handled things like this with. Now we have to pay for it up front and then we have to reimburse them back. And uh, uh, so we don't probably look at getting that back. We probably get done all of these. But uh, uh, consideration approved for the payment to the Jackson Post Office for $45.85. Motion. Second. Motion by Ray Moeller. Second for Donnie Bush. Any discussion? District 1. Aye. District 2. Aye. District 3. Aye. Uh, I'm kind of going to, I don't know that I have to do these one at a time. Uh, Mr. Brenda Miller, I was actually going to take HIJ and K. And what this is, is an approval of the budget for the Brethy County Clerk. Approval setting the maximum for the deputies and assistants for the Brethy County Clerk. Consideration approval 2019 budget for the Brethy County Sheriff's Office. Consideration approval setting the max salary for the amount for the deputy and fifth for the sheriff's office. Uh, can I make a motion to include them all in one? Uh, I'm going to table this. We haven't been able to get together and get our numbers together and look at the maximum uh, uh, number.
met uh, issues in the past with the coroner's office and the jail's office for the volunteers. Yeah, I'm aware of that. I was going to have worked on those issues, but that's something you definitely need to take up the first time. Yeah. You see, because those were people who were forced to have issues in the past, and I know. <coughs> Like I say, what, what I've talked to them down there, as long as he don't draw, uh, he worked for him, he worked for him for years, but right now he's actually laid off. Uh, he can't work as long as he don't get paid any benefit. It wouldn't interfere with his uh, uh, No, but if he gets paid anything, then that interferes with his uh, uh, unemployment. Next one on the list is Joyce Elkins. Uh, 
Okay, that's the revenue. Okay, this is everything took in, and you know, this is my salary according to the KRS that I, that I get. This is the girl's salary, and this is everything, plus like in, in this total, I had my floors worked on. And I come to the fiscal court and I ask them, and will she remember, I asked if I could have my floors fixed. So even that is in this total here too. And also I had to pay some back, back debts from the other clerk. That's in that total, okay? So this is what I turned over to fiscal court. After all these come out, and with the maximum salary, this, all these don't even have to come out. And actually, have you got that maximum salary? I'll explain that in a minute. But what I'm trying to say is whenever I took over the clerk, I met with the fiscal court, and if you all remember, I started those girls out in last fiscal court meeting. I feel really bad for my workers because their wages were misquoted in here by a large amount. Their salaries was not accurate, and I apologize to them, and it really hurt me because that's not what my girls make. I met with the physical court, and I think they were a little bit in violation, but that's how bad I wanted to work with them. They told, um, and they said, you can't hire anybody. I did not hire, I had a worker leave, I did not replace her. Therefore, I, and I, I kept trying to call them, I wanted to work with them, and I still want to work with you all. I really, really do. The number of 300000 I lost an employee. I still will come down. But I cannot come down like you are asking me to because I would have to close my doors a lot. I had even told Jeff. I even have an appointment to meet with the dealership in Hazard to try to bring money into this county. I told Jeff I wanted to get on the radio <coughs> and tell people if you buy a car, transfer it in our county so we can get that, that tax dollars. I care about Brenda County. And I want to be the best clerk I can be. And I'm honest, and I'm running it as hard as I can to do a good job. And I don't know how else to tell y'all I'm willing to work with you all. And when you all set this maximum thing, it's not you all giving me money. I give you all money. I, and when I ran for office, I said I'll stay open on Saturdays. But if my thing is lower, guess what? Y'all don't get to have Saturdays open. My girls are going to get their arms cut. I'll probably lose a girl. I'm doing everything in my power to work with you all in physical court. I really, really am. I tried to call you, I tried to contact with you. Me and Alice talked, and I felt like we had a good discussion. The other two I reached out to you, can't get you to respond back to me. I don't know what the problem is, but I feel like for Breath the County to grow, we need to work together. And I've made promises, and guys, have I not kept my promises? Guys, have I not kept my promises? Roy Darwin, have I not kept my promises? I have. Yeah. Alice, have I not kept my promises? I really have. Other than the lawsuit. What about it? What did you You all took my time. To you all took my time for me. That's, that's, that don't have anything to do with my budget. Am I allowed to do this? Let him address what you okay. have to Did you say you would drop the lawsuit if we would work with you? You wouldn't hire anymore, you wouldn't get any raises, but you said you would also drop the lawsuit. The it's lawsuit the fiscal done. court and John Lester. What else I told That's exactly what you said, that you would drop the lawsuit if it had anything to do with fiscal court. And I'm you not, said you I've would not seen, drop the lawsuit no matter what court. On, on John Lester. Now, that's, I have never had a fiscal court suit. No, you said, never. You, you asked said. me, I told you. That's why we tried to work with you. Uh, Ellen, I have never had this the physical court suit. That's the thought. They never thought that I, that's false. But you had him suit also. No, I did not. Well, all right. Okay. Maybe you did. Maybe we're all Well, saying, anyway, I kept my end of the bargain. <coughs> Ashley, can you really explain that to them? Okay. I'll, I'll See, my good people. Okay. If you had, if you had, you had your question, if you address it, y'all can look at that and, and, and work that out. Because we and have we, to work this out. We ain't going to work it out in here. I understand. But, but I mean, uh, what have you got to read? Not this one. But uh, Alice, this right here says reasonable. We need to reason together. Okay, y'all reason. We okay, I shall hear Tell you what, if you let if you let somebody explain the same chart using your numbers up there, then we'll see exactly if we're reasonable or not, and let this crowd address it. Okay. Okay. Would you agree to that? Okay. Maybe we're all maybe we're all on a different page. Okay, I agree. Okay, explain that. Okay, so that that's got that. And Anthony, we'll we just wanted to explain this maximum order a little bit more. Um, 
I think a lot of people was confused that we was asking for a budget to be three hundred thousand dollars, or we're asking <coughs> fiscal quarter to give us three hundred thousand dollars, and that's not the case. Um, the maximum order is just asking the fiscal court to approve that we can spend X amount of dollars out of our fees. It's already our money. We're just asking them to approve. You can spend three hundred thousand dollars of your fees on salaries, retirement, blah, blah, blah. We're not asking them for money. It's just asking them to approve that we spend this amount of our fees <coughs> on these items in our office. And then, um, you know, we also, there is KRSs. Um, one state's KRS 64.530. Any revenue received by a county clerk in any calendar year shall be used exclusively for the statutory duties of the county clerk and budgeted accordingly. So that's why we're trying to budget that and you know like I said we're not asking them to give our office three hundred thousand. We turn money over to them. It's just asking them to approve we can use that much of our fees for our office. So we just wanted to clarify that a little bit. I think what the, what the problem is that, that uh, understanding what a fee pool office and a non fee pool office is, the sheriff, for instance, is a non fee pool office. He runs his own <coughs> office. He starts out with nothing at the beginning of the year. He gets money from the Department of Local Government and Freighter, gets him started. Then he runs his own office. The money he collects, he, he pays his own payroll. He pays his bills and whatever he needs to run his office. At the end of the year, if he got any excess money, he turns he's turned over to the fiscal <coughs> court. The county clerk's office, as of 2015, up till 2015, Tony Watts was not a fee pool office. He was he offered just like the sheriff's office does. In 2015, when Harold Hutchinson was was appointed the county court clerk. We voted to put him, make him a fee pool office, which that means the money they, they take in, except for the state fees, if you license your car, if you get a deed, or whatever, that money goes into the, the clerk's office. And since she has to turn everything over that she collects to the fiscal court, the treasurer writes the checks for her for her payroll bill. We, we can we control the money of the clerks as a fee pool office. It's it's a, I think it's what the problem is. But anyway, the three hundred thousand is a just a cap. It's a ceiling. We've got the figures. We figured it. We figured it. Figured it. She's got two clerks. The seventeen dollars per hour. She's got two makes thirteen dollars per hour. Okay, do the math. Figure your withholdings. Everything in that, she only comes up to one hundred and sixty-two dollars, sixty-two thousand dollars. That's what you spend on your clerks. Actually, it's not that, but it's close to it. Which I just round that off. So you're asking for three hundred thousand dollars. I'm not asking for that. I'm saying <coughs> up to that. Okay. If, if we budget you three hundred thousand dollars for your annual order, then you spend up to that. You can car people, you give them raises, you can do whatever. Right? Okay. So why should we why should we vote? <coughs> and, and the judge is just when his he opened this meeting, told us what financial matters we were in. We're not saying that you would. That's what's included. Right. And it, yeah, that's right. Included in the three hundred thousand is full time salary and wages. Works on it. Works on it. Right. Well, you've got all that broke down for you, and you reduce the top of We already know about it. Okay, so you're scared. Make that body go ahead and... Right here, right here. Right here. Right Full-time wages, salaries, overtime wages, part-time salary and wages, vacation and sick leave, insurance, other than health. It's not included in this. Plain, plain well, states. Employer match, Social Security, retirement, and Medicare. That's in this three hundred thousand annual order, correct? Right? Okay. So 
My question is, why do you need a $300,000 cap? Well, I'm not sure
I was sitting up here last last court meeting, y'all asked me, when I look at it, I come up with the same number as y'all did on, on what it what it ended up costing her. Y'all asked was she underneath her maximum cap. She was uh, way underneath it. If you leave out health and church and you leave out that thing. Well, what we need to do, and not just with just the clerk, we need to do the same thing with the sheriff. Uh, their budget was on 120000 last year. It's up to 146. We need to do the same thing with it. We just need to look at it and see how we're going to cut the other departments and then justify giving them $46,000 increase in their bank account. But again, I just think we need to, uh, I, I, I think Becky set them up. Uh, well, let me say one more thing. These girls over here has worked a long time to be up to their salary. Uh, Trish, how many years have you worked? Seven things. How many? Twelve. Twelve and seventeen years. So they earned a great pay they got. And I just want to commend them for that. I'm, I'm not disputing that. Like I say, last time the meeting just got way out of control. Numbers were through us there that wasn't. So I didn't feel bad because they're, they're, they're paid. Figure I quoted. It's just right here. <coughs> our, our treasure. <coughs> this included with holdings. That's where the description was. I've got right here black and white. But I mean, you didn't you, ask me that. You said that was my gross salary, though. I said I've got the You said that was my gross salary. You took it that way. No, you're saying it. Okay. Well, expenses are biggest. Right. Everybody's not understanding. Expenses are what's included here. That's the problem. Like I say, we're going to get this thing worked out. Uh, we just need to all get together, work it out. Show our numbers, come up with a max account. Hopefully, we get this together in the next few days because right now we're in violation of state law. Uh, it didn't sound too bad the other day when it's just saying we're in violation, but if you read on down, uh, and I don't know if Brendan has got his brief for both if you get into the statute part of it. it uh, I did talk to Robert Brown today, and he said it was, but he said I was under my old budget. I just go right on right. Right. Well, let, me, let me say this. I don't, by changing that number to 160, you wouldn't have to get rid of a soul. You wouldn't have to lay nobody on. You couldn't go above that. You ain't going to be able to hire people. You ain't going to be able to get them right at 165. You keep the same. Everybody else is. I don't think that we ain't talking about that. I know okay. that everybody could have that number. We love to do that. You can keep the same personnel that you have at the same time. You all don't control that. You realize that, don't you? At the same time. <laughs> you don't read. Hey, you don't read. 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 Okay. Here, I don't know. Uh, we, we, we said all we need to say. Uh, I, just want, I just want everybody to sit down with Becky. I want to get the numbers. Pardon? I want to make the numbers. I'm not, I'm not going to this is for all this uh, for any, I'm not going to set the motion on the salary or account. You don't have know what it is. I don't. I ain't going to, make, I ain't going to set the motion. Do you know what it is over there? Uh, you know what it is? The number, whatever. I mean, we all need to be on the same page. Becky, do you know what the number is? I was about to try to contact them. So you're not going to recognize me to make a motion this time? Not regarding, I've already tabled the uh, motion on the sheriff budget, maximum count, <coughs> uh, the clerk injured. Uh, we need to sit down, get together, uh, work it out, and everybody know what we're agreeing to. I mean, I'm not going to sit up here and say the motion that uh, me, me, me in this position and uh, uh, for the motion. So uh, that's all we got in the audience. Uh, uh, next thing on the agenda. Is a consideration for approval to begin the legal process to adopt J and Z Lane <coughs> and also Devon Lane into the county road plan. And again, this is just uh, the first part of it. Uh, I'll consider a motion to approve the beginning of the legal process to adopt it in J and Z Lane and Devon Lane.
can kind of, a lot of people may wonder what we're doing approving to begin the process of this, the procedure to adopt it. Uh, me and Brendan, we, I did got time to sit down and talk with him. We talked about this uh, before we took office. Uh, the cemetery road that the county is maintaining already, uh, uh, and other roads that people assume that the county road has been adopted in, grandfathered in, it may go three tenths of a holler, it may be a mile long now. Uh, if you've got a road or cemetery, uh, what I want y'all to do is get your deed together, name it, come up with three or four different names, because a lot of different names, and then we'll start the process on it. Don't mean we're going to adopt it in. We we'll start the process and make sure it's legal. Then they go out and measure it. Again, let's explain another thing. That's how we get our money from the state. We set up in a form of a big piece of pie. All 120 counties. <coughs> the bigger your county is, the more piece of pie you get. Uh, and, and, and we've got, how many miles have we got adopted in? About 300? I wouldn't doubt that that number came almost double if we go through the process and get everything in. So if it doubles, what money we get appropriated per year can double. Uh, a lot of them we keep it up anyway, but we're doing it out of funds that was complete. Kind of sort of speak. It don't sound good, but I mean that's it. So uh, if you've got roads, you got cemeteries, get your deeds together. Yeah, speak to that. You can. Yeah. The statute says the cemetery roads have to be donated. Okay. So it's not get into a situation where people are, you know, we have county roads. There's a whole lot of issues. Of course, people remember my time before I've got a whole book on this county road stuff. What's this and that. So people want to have their road accepted in the county road system. You have to go through the direct. Okay. 